What are we doing so wrong that we're allowing this emerge and grow unchecked? Um, what I think we're doing is not that we're doing it wrong, is that we're not doing anything generally. We have it on paper that we have uh, facilities, services. Um, I've spoken with politicians over the years um, through media and otherwise where they will swear in uh, to the public that they're being effective when we at this stage have twice the European average of drug use, which is just... It's just horrifying. Why is that, say. do you think? Why because think? we continue to do, as, as I was saying earlier, you know, when you keep doing something that doesn't work, you keep getting the same problem or it gets worse. And I'd say this to people at home, but anything you're doing at the moment, don't keep doing the same thing. It gives you the same problems. Um, so it's about changing patterns. And you need someone in leadership who's prepared to stand out and... They see it as a risk to stand out and say this isn't working. Now we'll change the whole system because they're afraid to take responsibility. But you need somebody that what that shows you is that what the calibre of politician you have in there is, you know, who will not stand out and say the truth. I mean, I hear it behind the scenes. People will say to me, politicians here and in Australia and everywhere that did the same. They say, we know this isn't working. We just don't know how to get out of it. And when you say you want to see behaviours changing from the leaders and tackling yes. the problem differently, what would you like to see done differently? I'd like to see them look at some of the advice that was given by um, Maria del Costa. He was the head of the UN on narcotics. And they said that, for instance, Sweden had one of the best systems. It's not perfect. Um, it's slightly disimproved at the moment, but it had had and has the lowest rate of drug use in Europe. And uh, when I was in Australia, the government brought me in because they were looking at changing their way of dealing with the drug problems. In Ireland, we tend to, we're basically semi-legalised drugs. We give out free drugs such as methadone. And I know people will argue this forever about it, but basically there are young people who cannot come off methadone at the moment, which is man-made opiates, which is like heroin. So we give out, uh, there's 10,000 on that alone in Dublin City, and in these regions there are more. Um, and are you suggesting we shouldn't be giving out methadone, or to the extent that it's been given out? Is it the, the I think extent? that's taken over from allowing people to come off drugs. It's taken over, and if you offer a drug to somebody who's scared of coming off drugs, they'll take it, um, unless they have some fear of the other. But... Um, you, for instance, in Sweden, what they do is um, if you get someone who's very extreme, even, you know, a 12, 13 year old, like in Ireland, a 12 year old who's on opiates, which they are at the moment, may be given another opiate. Um, like 12 years of age. I remember speaking to, um, she was a head prosecutor in New York, and they will not refer, you know, she wouldn't refer people to that type of situation. So the methadone programme may be for very established users in, of much older age, but that a 12 year old user should not be put on an alternative I substance. Can't they should be how taken off. a 12 year old off. or a 13 or 14, 16 year old. And thankfully, they haven't come up with um, other substitute drugs such a, if, uh, to take over for cocaine or crack. And that you must remember there's a lot of pharmaceutical companies making a lot of money off this. Um, it's the second biggest trade in the world. So you have a lot of people who will make a lot of money from this problem continuing. So that's why it's important that uh, families are more vigilant than ever because there, there is a lot of um, criminal activity around drug use uh, and corruption, both at all government levels and um, Well, in the Phoenix Park, it is argued that it was very, very criminal driven, that there were actually seriously heavy drug distributors there present specifically to sell and to deal, yeah. Well, it would be a very suitable marketplace to do it because it's a lot of young people. But there were a lot of young people underage who turned up there with a lot of alcohol mm. and were seen bringing it on the streets prior to that. Now, where did they get it? How did we enforce that? Um, truthfully, I think law enforcement is even under-resourced at the moment. You mentioned that uh, double the drug users in Ireland than in other countries in Europe, for example. And again, the alcohol abuse situation is so high here. Do you worry that there's a kind of a gene in the Irish psyche, a dependency gene that makes us actually look for these substances more than others? Or is it down to that management of the situation by those in, in office that you're more concerned about? 
Um, I think there's a number of factors that affect us. Um, we can be quite melancholy as a nation and do tend to concentrate on the negatives a lot, you know, every day. It's uh, wet or it's raining or it's grey. There are people in hospital who would love to be outside running in the rain. So you have to make a decision about what type of day you're going to have. And we are a little bit melancholy, but we're very resilient in many other ways. Um, and that's why it's a shame to see that not being backed up um, in leadership areas where money could be put into um you know, the prevention of drug use. You must remember that, like when I've spoken before to some politicians, they may say, well, it'll cost more. It doesn't. Because at the moment, your a and are full of people who have drug or alcohol related problems. There are people who are injured on the road or killed. My own mother had her leg cut off by a drunk driver years ago when she was hit by a car. Um, you know, all those things happen because uh, young children in schools have uh, sometimes learning difficulties. So would you decrease? Of course you would. It makes common sense. All you do is repeat what any parent is trying to do in their home. They're trying to keep their kids off drugs. Leadership should be back in that. I don't believe they are. Marie, do you still have the will for the fight? What is the future for the Ashton Foundation and for yourself at its helm? Yes, I, I do. But uh, sometimes I, I would like to concentrate a bit on doing some of my own things as well. Um, I have been writing a book. It's not just totally finished yet. I hope by the end of the year that's out. Um, I, you know, still have work to do, maybe to go back to Australia. There's some private work I want to do. Um, and I certainly will be doing more private work because uh, the charity, for instance, has no funding at all coming in from any uh, grant source at the moment. So in one way, it's like everything else. You can sit there and complain about it or you can say, well, maybe... When Ireland's ready for it, they'll put the money into it. In the meantime, I'll be making decisions for me that will change my situation. So, uh, yes, I have to go to Brazil because I've been asked to go there. Um, there are particular leaders there who are looking at their drug situation. So, you know, it's it's always exciting. You can make your life as exciting as you want. <laughs> well, Marie, I'm sure there's an awful lot of people in Navan and much further afield to appreciate enormously what you've been doing with the Ashton Foundation over the years. And that was Marie Byrne, director of the Ashton Group International. Thank you very much for joining us here today on LMFM. 